Welcome to this AppSplash video tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the analytics and messaging functionality inside AppSplash and also the GeoWave location based functionality. So when you have published an AppSplash app or implemented the GeoWave SDK into your app you'll see this control panel with the options on the left hand side for user analytics and push messaging. Today we're going to be looking at the Soho Bars app it's an app that our designer published so we're not disclosing any uh, customer information by showing you these analytics so if we click on the user analytics we'll see how many app users we have how many have push messaging enabled how many are active in the last 30 days and how many are new in the last 30 days and you see the push messaging uh, percentage is quite a high number and that's because within app splash and in geowave we give guidelines for where to put the push trigger um, usually on a value page rather than just putting the pop-up on the home page uh, and helping you to get up to 75% opt-in to the push messaging way higher than you would get for SMS or email opt-in. The analytics will also show you app usage in the last seven days so that if you've sent a push message on a particular day have you seen an uplift in, in traffic uh, and also what percentage of the app features um, customers are using and then you can advise on on moving different features around in the app for your client. In the purple box below you'll also see as, as I mentioned before value features things such as vouchers, loyalty cards, booking pages um, and it'll track things like vouchers redeemed, loyalty cards, stamps in the purple box. We tend to think of these as uh, return on investment statistics so ROI numbers that you can put in reports to your client and when they say well I'm spending this much every month what do I get back you can tell them when you've had 60 vouchers redeemed this month and they can work out the return on investment. So that's the standard analytics that comes with these apps um, but if you have GeoWave enabled you can also get the Geo Analytics which is where it starts to get quite interesting. So for this app we've got venues in central London the venues represented by the purple pins and we get the heat bubbles of users interacting with the app in the different colors. So we can see the distribution of our user base but more importantly we can actually see for specific venues if we're getting more or less users than the other venues. So as an example if here at Punk on Soho Street we'd run some kind of promotion yesterday we would expect five users to be engaged with the app at the venue or if we're running a check-in or voucher promotion again we'd expect to see some kind of check-in behavior on this map the other nice thing you can do with Geo Analytics is to compare the traffic with your competitors. So on higher price plans you can overlay your competitors stores on this map and see if actually any of your customers are browsing your app in their restaurant or vice versa. Lower down the page you'll see all the venues, the app views in the last seven days, the app views in the previous week so you can see you can actually see uplift patterns uh, here in GeoWave so again this is particularly nice if, if you're running a promotion in a particular bar and you see it's got 150 percent uplift well that's great so those are the analytics tools now let's move on to the push messaging so the push messaging here has brought up a list of options on the lower price plans you actually only get to broadcast a message to your whole user base um, and this is something that uh, you really don't want to abuse. So if you're broadcasting a message to everybody, we recommend you try to do this fortnightly, perhaps weekly, depending on the offer, but certainly not daily. We also recommend that you only really push message something of value, something that the user couldn't just find on your Twitter feed, typically a voucher, an offer, something specific to the app, new app content, these kind of things. On the higher price plan, you'll be able to filter by iPhone and Android users, you'll be able to filter by inactive users, so that's quite an interesting one. Often people are keen to leave alone their active user base who are using the app, checking into their venue, but they might want to send a message to people who've forgotten about their app. Quite typically, an app might sit on the home page for a few weeks, and if there's no fresh content, the user might forget about it. So you could update the content, send them a push message, and it will only go to people who haven't used the app for 30 days, which is quite nice. Another targeting option here is to target by venue. 
So this will let you send a push message to people who've interacted with the app in the last 30 days around this venue and you can filter the distance. So you can pick a venue from your app or you could type in an address here and then it will target the map to the address and you could target a message there to Regent Street so again that's app users who've interacted with your app within a kilometre of Regent Street in the last 30 days so a lot of people ask well is this geofencing well it's not specifically geofencing this is more behavioural targeting this is people who've used the app near your venue as opposed to they're standing there right now um, there's a bit of a myth around that you know targeting people who just walk past your store is going to be effective and actually it's often just annoying so we do run geofencing um, but we have a separate feature for that and we review every application for geofencing in an app because we've seen we've seen situations where apps can um, can end up getting some very bad reviews because the user just found it popping up every day on the way to work so geofencing does exist within this geowave product but this behavioral targeting is a much more effective use case for the technology so just to recap, you could send a message to people who have been near the Alphabet Bar recently and then a different message to people who have been near Regent Street recently with the app. So that's the location based targeting options. Now let's look at what the app would open on when the message arrives. So you can have the app just open as it would on the first tab or let's say you've got five tabs at the bottom of your app and the third one is the food and drink menu, you could select the third tab and then when the user opens the push message there they are on the food and drink menu. You could also choose to open on a URL, a picture embedded on your server. So if you type in the URL of that image when the app opens up you'll see the image right inside. So if we type in the location of an image and when we hit send it'll open up inside an image in the app and I'll show you how that might look now. So there would be the pop-up for the push message and when the user clicks launch it's going to launch the app but also pull in the image at the same time giving you the effect of a full screen promotion page which is really nice. So when the user clicks the close button at the top left they remain inside your app. So that's a, a rich media image message which is quite a nice option there and the other thing to note is that once the user has dismissed that message it remains in their in tray here when they drag the screen down until they dismiss it so some really good marketing there to have your brand on the user's notification tray so the other thing you can do with this system is you could target a message to be delivered either right now or you could schedule a message to go out on a certain day so obviously if it's an evening promotion you might not be around at the time you want to send it all you would have to do is set the date, set the time you'd like it to go out and, and off it goes. Composing the messages itself is easy. You just type out a tweet length message, hit send and that will go out to the targeted user base. So if we go back a step, just another word on the behavioural targeting. You can, you can also look at bespoke plans where we can code up specific behaviour such as the user has been near this venue three times this month but they've also taken certain actions in the phone so a common one we get asked for is a user who's made a booking or a user who's filled up a shopping basket um, and has interacted near this venue then gets a specific message and once those are coded up on our back-end servers you'll see these in the drop downs so that's a, a quick run through for the app splash analytics and messaging functionality and just a little taster of what GeoWave can do.